I'd like to start doing some videos uh, every Sunday for like a Sunday school lesson, a Sunday morning lesson, and a Sunday p.m. lesson. For those who maybe your church isn't having church, or you just can't go to church, or you just don't have a church near you, maybe this could be something that you could look forward to to listen to every Sunday and just hear the words of God and maybe this can give you comfort and edify you. Now this will be nothing that should ever replace your church service if you go to one or anything like that. And I'm sure you have a pastor that's feeding you a lot better than I ever could. This is just something to help those who maybe can't go to church at the time <clears throat> or maybe you just want a little bit of, of extra Bible teaching. But this first lesson I want to do is about benefits of listening to preaching. There are a lot of benefits of getting some Bible preaching and listening to it, not just Sunday and Wednesday, but every day. There are a few Christians that listen to a pastor three times a week. There are even fewer Christians that listen to preaching seven days a week. Now, I think listening to, in this day that we're living in, I think preaching should be a part of your life daily because we have 24-7 access to preaching. So here's some benefits of listening to preaching. The first thing is it knocks off some rough edges. In 2 Timothy 4 and verse 2, it says, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. If you consistently listen to hard Bible preaching, it would change your life. It would change the way you look at things. The same way evil communications corrupt good manners is the same way that good communications will change your bad manners. This world messes up your mind and you need your mind fixed. In Revelation 12 or Romans 12 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You have to renew your mind. You have been out in the world, and it infects you with sin and their way of thinking. But when you put on preaching, it knocks all those worldly edges off. The more you listen to it, the better. When I first got saved, I would listen to Danny Castle sermons eight hours a day at work. I'm sure I heard at least, at the least, 3,000 of his sermons. It changed the way I thought about a lot of things. It gave me some common sense. The world makes you lose common sense. Look around. I mean, I don't believe I have very good common sense, but look at the world. Look at their common sense that they have. They don't have it. They're thinking crazy. They're not listening to preaching. They're not listening to biblical preaching. The Lord said to Jonah in Jonah 3, 2, Arise, go into Nineveh, the great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went into Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. Jonah had to go to Nineveh to cry against their sins. You need someone to cry against your sins. Nineveh ended up getting right, and the preaching of Jonah led them away from destruction. I've heard someone preaching on things that I was doing, and it led me away from destruction. In Acts 2, 36-37, it says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Notice the preaching of Peter pricked them in their heart. Preaching will do something for your heart. It softens your heart. It rewires your brain and will train you up in the way you should go. Hard preaching is needed. You don't have to 
try to preach hard. If you preach the Bible, then you will preach against sin. The rebukes are on every page. You can find it in every story. You have to try not to preach hard to not preach hard. You have to try to not preach the Bible if you don't want to preach hard. That's why those guys that don't preach hard, they don't preach the Bible. When you first got saved, you didn't have any biblical sense at all. You need someone who's been around a while to tell you how it is. That's why most of the preachers I've listened to my entire saved life are in their 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s. You need preaching from someone who is experienced and can warn you and give you biblical principles to live by. It will knock the rough edges off you. Many times I'll have my headphones on and I'm listening to preaching and someone will come up to me and say, what kind of music are you listening to? And then I tell them, well, I'm just listening to preaching. And the look on their face is hilarious. They never heard of such. Most Christians have never heard of listening to preaching outside of church. They think you just listen to preaching in church. And they think it's just some boring little speech for 30 minutes that some guy is doing. But listening to preaching outside of church has become a part of my everyday life. It's become a hobby. I mean, I collect sermons. I have hours and hours of sermons on flash drives. I saved on my computer. Instead of listening to worldly stuff like country music that brainwashes your mind for the world, put the preaching on. The country music puts a soft spot in your heart for drinking, partying, living for the flesh, and cheating. Preaching puts a big bulletproof shield around your heart so that it won't get softened to sin. But it also softens your heart at the same time to the things of God so that it won't be hardened by sin. Trade in the worldly podcasts and put on some preaching. Even the podcasts by like Ben Shapiro and the Hodge Twins and Jordan Peterson. These men may have some good things, but they may actually, you know, they're not always biblical at all. They may have some good morals for lost people. As a lost person, they got good morals, but at the same time, they shouldn't replace preaching in your life. Because you get consumed in politics and the things of this world and the coronavirus and all this stuff that you can't do anything about. And why do you want to add all that junk on the what you've already got going on? Bible preaching will set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. While Ben Shapiro and those guys have some good ideas, they have good thoughts, they're like geniuses and all that. That's not setting your affection on things above. That's keeping your mind on thinking that the things of this world and who the president is is the answer to problems, and it's not. Bible preaching will have you looking for a kingdom whose builder and maker is God. Bible preaching will have you looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, not for Donald Trump to become back as president again. I mean, I hated that Donald Trump didn't win. But Donald Trump's not the answer to my problems. Another benefit of listening to preaching is it gives you a balanced view. Look at 1 Corinthians 1, 11. It says, For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of Paul, and I of Apollos. And I have Cephas, and I have Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? The Corinthians had all of these contentions going on. They were fighting amongst themselves. They were like, I got saved under Apollos. Another said, I got saved under Paul. Another said, I don't follow a man. I only follow Jesus. I don't need Paul's reference Bible. I got this plain text Bible and the Holy Spirit tells me, the Holy Spirit teaches me, I'm not following a man. You see a lot of that today. I've always tried to keep a balanced view. And this is not a balanced view that the Corinthians had. You have so many different sects of Bible believers today. It's insane. There are sects that are different groups just because they are 
they disagree on one thing or because their pastor or leader did something in the past that the other groups didn't like. So therefore, they're not for that person. It's also childish. We're all a part of the same body if we believe the gospel. I'm about to tell you the wide variety of preachers that I listen to, and some people would even break fellowship with me just because I listen to someone else that they don't like. Even some of the pastors I listen to would consider me an unsaved, lost heretic, and I really don't care. I have, I have Christian friends who would not talk to me no more because if they found out a certain pastor that I like, and I don't care if they know that I listen to that pastor or not, because I love Christians, and I love preaching, and I appreciate anybody who's trying to do something for God. And if they think I'm lost, that's their opinion. I know I'm saved. I know what's required to be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and put your trust on Jesus Christ and what he did for you in the cross. I've believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. If someone is so self-righteous that they don't think I'm saved because of somebody I listen to, then they're adding works to the gospel. That's all there is to it. But to give you an example of who I listen to, I'll just start from the beginning. The first real preaching that I started to listen to was Danny Castle. And I just happened to find him on the Jesus is Savior website as a lost person. And I also read a lot of the articles by David J. Stewart after getting saved. And listening to Danny Castle preach on hell, I got saved during listening to about two or three sermons in there. And one of them was that six surprises wedding in hell. But when I first read David's articles about music and stuff, I just wasn't 100% convinced. But as I was reading those articles, I began to be renewed in my mind, as we already talked about. I was being transformed in my mind. And I would listen to Danny preach for 8 to 10 hours a day at work without a break, doing back-breaking work. My flesh was being beat to a pulp mentally and physically. Mixing preaching with working with your hands will transform your Christian walk. You need, you need those two things. You need hard preaching, and I highly recommend hard physical work every day that you go to. Uh, at this time, I was doing much even more harder work than I am now. Six days a week driving an hour there, an hour back. And even on the hour there and the hour back, I would listen to preaching. So I, I was listening to tons and tons of sermons at this time. But at this time, Daddy Castle introduced me to Ruckman. From this point, I didn't just love preaching, but Ruckman helped me get a love for the Bible that I did not have before. And that's one of the greatest things that a man can do for you is get you a genuine interest in the Bible. You see, your pastor can preach hard three times a week to you, and you feel bad about your sin, and you, you have your affection on things above on Sunday, then you wake up on Monday. Your pastor's not there preaching at you. And if he didn't give you that genuine interest and genuine love for the Scriptures, then you're on your own until Wednesday. But if he gave you that genuine interest and love for the Bible, then Monday morning, you're pulling out your Bible and you're reading it. And that's that's keeping you good and straight. And then you hear the preaching again Wednesday. And then you wake up Thursday, and if you've got that genuine interest and love for the Bible, you pull out the Bible again. That's setting your affection on things above until Sunday. You see, it's not just about preaching. You want some preaching that's going to give you a genuine interest and genuine love for the Scriptures. So when I was introduced to Ruckman, this is what got me really into the Scriptures. And at this same time, I found out about Phil Kidd, the evangelist Phil Kidd. This also helped me beat down the flesh because Phil Kidd, that's some hard and mean 
convicting sermons there. Shortly after this, I found out about David Hoffman and the Common Man's Reference Bible. Now, this is what made me discover my love for going verse by verse through every chapter of the Bible. That was the influence for me doing all these studies on here, going verse by verse through each book of the Bible. Now, Ruckman did this too, but Hoffman's what really got me into the verse by verse Bible teachings. And I've filled up good portions of three of his Common Man's Reference Bibles so far. I have the 3rd edition, 4th edition, 5th edition, and I did have the hardback, but I gave it to someone. But he's answered hundreds of my questions through email over the past 6 or 7 years. So those are some of the preachers I listen to, and here's where I'll lose a lot of people. Even Bible believers that listen to my studies. I can even listen to Stephen An Stephen Anderson and get edified from it. I've listened to him over the past 10 years of being saved. I've stood really hard against a lot of what he says, but the preaching is great. He's a Bible student. He does a different topic every week. He goes through a different chapter every week. This motivates me to do the same thing. Also, his scripture memory. He has most of the New Testament memorized. You have to respect that. And that motivates me just seeing that he does that. That motivates me to want to memorize scripture. That motivates me to want to keep learning a different topic or a different chapter each week. And it is very hard preaching. And preaching about something different every week and not just the same thing over and over again. You need, some, you, you need to be constantly learning. If you're not constantly learning something, you're getting dumber. Because your mind is constantly forgetting something. Now, he is a preacher that would say I'm lost. Stephen Anderson would not even believe I'm a saved person. But I could care less. You know, he says that if you listen to Peter Ruckman, then you're lost. And Peter Ruckman is my teacher. But that was the very words out of his, out of his mouth, of Stephen Anderson's mouth one time. If you listen to Peter Ruckman, you're lost. If that's how he feels, then that's fine. I'm not going to cheat myself out of hearing what Stephen Anderson has to say just because he thinks I'm lost. I know that statement is ridiculous. And that's all that matters. But that doesn't mean everything he says is ridiculous. And I'm not going to let him cheat me out of listening to Ruckman because of such a ridiculous statement. I could care less what people think about who I listen to. If the pre preachers I listen to were in the same room, they would probably kill each other. But if I was in the same room, I would shake all their hands and get their autographs in my Bible. I really don't care if someone doesn't think I should listen to someone else. If someone is saved and living right and has a King James Bible and teaching salvation right, then I really don't have any right to not be their friend. We are one in Christ Jesus. I don't have any right to break fellowship or to just say I wouldn't be friends or that I don't like another Christian. I have no right to say that. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ if we have believed the gospel. To turn away someone who is saved and who's living right from fellowship is a very wicked thing. But I can listen to Peter Ruckman and then listen to Stephen Anderson in the same day. Anderson hates Ruckman. Hates him. He says he's a psycho. He said he's lost. He says he's in hell. That is a ridiculous, stupid statement. Ruckman wrote something against Anderson in his Daniel commentary. So Ruckman obviously didn't like Stephen Anderson. I still listen to Phil Kidd to this day, even Phil Kidd's current sermons. He's changed a lot. And some people wrote him off a long time ago because he preached so mean to them. But now he's, he's, uh, Phil Kidd has taken Baptist off of his church name. So now all the rest of the people hate him. I could care less if he took Baptist off. I really don't care. 
uh, Ruckman talked against Phil Kidd and his his John commentary, and uh, I know that Phil Kidd said that he would not stand on a in a pulpit next to someone who's been divorced and remarried in the past. I, I don't think he still feels that way, but I know that he probably in the past probably thought Ruckman was should not preach, or at least not pastor. So they would have had their differences there. And um, Ruckman is one of my teachers, but I still like Phil Kidd. I've always liked Phil Kidd, even though them, them two would not have liked each other, back then at least. And if you give people the benefit of the doubt, you find out that people aren't nowhere near as bad as other people make them out to be. Even Ruckman is not as mean as everyone makes him out to be. They just read his books against Bible correctors, and he calls them names and says certain words, so they hate him because of that. But, you see, I listen to a lot of different pastors. This helps give you a balanced view. You don't have to listen to the same crowd of Bible preachers all the time. That doesn't give you a balanced view. But I, I began listening to my pastor that I currently have shortly after I got saved as well. Pastor Donnie Dalton, he inspired me to memorize scripture and to love expository preaching. Preaching where you use a lot of Bible. And whenever I put up a sermon by him, they start bad-mouthing his delivery. Who cares what they say? They say, who's too loud? It's fake. It's carnival preaching. But who cares about all that stuff? He's, if he's preaching the truth... Who cares, who, who cares if he yells or doesn't yell? I'm concerned with the message. I can get truth out of any type of delivery. I don't need somebody to yell. I don't, really. Some people only listen to people if they yell. I don't need somebody to just be quiet. I don't care. You have certain people who will only listen to preachers that yell and that are very charismatic. And they would bash guys like Hoffman and Bevins Welder who simply just talk in their normal voice when they preach. I don't think the word preaching is limited to yelling. On the, uh, on the other hand, you have those who hate preachers who do yell. Just like, let people be who they are. You don't have to have somebody who's just like you are. God has a preacher for everybody. And if you're smart, you will listen to all the different types of Bible preachers. But it gives you a balanced view. That's a benefit of preaching. The next benefit of preaching is that it shows you the way of God more perfectly. In Acts 18, 24 through 26, it says, And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the Scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the Spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. So you can be mighty in the scriptures like Apollos and still have somebody come along and show you the way of God more perfectly because you don't know everything. And if you think you know everything, then you would be God. I mean, if you knew everything and had everything right, then that would be God. But you don't know everything, and you don't have everything right. I heard Sam Gipp say that one time. He said he would listen to a preacher, and he said, well, this guy has almost everything right except for this one thing. And he thought, well, I'll just listen to him, learn everything he knows, and then correct what he doesn't have right. And But then he said, well, then he would be God if he did that because he would know everything and have everything right. But he said it doesn't work that way. Everybody is wrong on something. And there are times when I've ignorantly believed something that was very ignorant according to the Bible, but the preaching I listened to showed me that I was wrong. You know, because I wasn't believing that thing, you know, just out of just blind rejection of the scriptures i was believing it out of ignorance 
and I'm still probably probably believing something out of ignorance. Maybe something that I've just always heard and I just took for granted that it was right when it, when it's not right. This is another reason why you shouldn't just listen to one camp of preachers. I mean, the preachers I listen to all have the right gospel. They all use the King James Bible, but I don't just stick with one group of Bible believers. I listen to them all. So there are times when I'll be listening to preaching and something the preacher says enlightens my thinking on something or corrects me on a doctrine that I'm wrong about. It's for correction and instruction in righteousness. And if you think that you are right on everything, then you're missing it. I've heard people say that they, they still believe exactly like they believe on everything when they got saved. And in my opinion, that shows that they're not studying enough and being open-minded and open to correction enough because there's no way in this world I still believe everything I believed when I got saved. It's a process, a lifelong process of learning the scriptures. Another problem with people is they think something is right because they have heard it all of their life and they don't think anyone with an opposing view could ever be right. You can show them with the Bible and they still say, well, I've always just believed, or, well, I've always thought, or I've got this conviction, or something like that. When someone shows you where you're wrong in the scriptures, then just change your view on that thing. And a benefit of listening to preaching is it'll give you a balanced view, and it also shows you the way of God more perfectly. It can show you where you're wrong on something. Another benefit to listening to preaching is that it keeps you from listening to something that you shouldn't. 1 Corinthians 15.33, Be not deceived, evil communications corrupt good manners. Proverbs 1.5 says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. When I'm at work, do you know what is going on in the background many times? People cussing, people telling dirty jokes, listening to filthy music. If they allow you to wear headphones, then put some preaching in your headphones and drown out all that stuff. I've noticed over the past few years, especially since the AirPods have came out, that they're even using headphones at the fast food places when they're taking your order. I mean, we, we're living in a time where this is becoming acceptable so don't just let the devil have the AirPods. Don't just listen to filthy stuff in your AirPods. Get rid of the filthy stuff. Get some Bible preaching. If you're around people constantly telling dirty jokes, they're eventually going to say something that is actually funny, but it's also dirty, and you're going to laugh at it. A lot of those dirty jokes that aren't so dirty are kind of funny and it can take everything you have in you not to laugh if you have some preaching on you're going to be less likely to hear it you have to be around those people you're going to be around people you can't go out of the world if all you have in your phone is preaching then you're not going to listen to the latest hits all that stuff is a big distraction Imagine all the songs you listen to. I bet it would take up a couple years of your life if you added them all together. You could have you could have years taken up by the songs you've listened to. And all that time you could have been pumping the word of God in you. But this brings me to the next benefit of listening to preaching and that is to make up for lost time. In Ephesians 5.16, it says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. In Colossians 4.5, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time. All those years that you weren't a Christian and that you didn't go to church to hear preaching can be done over. You can redeem the time. I probably listened to more preaching the first couple years that I was saved than some Christians do their whole lifetime, even though they went to church every time the doors were open. That's how much preaching you can listen to if you set your mind to it. I've heard thousands and thousands and thousands of sermons just in the past 10 years of being saved. Hours and hours and hours of Bible teaching and Bible preaching. 
I've listened to so much that I can tell who the preacher listens to, who their teacher is, whose sermon influenced their sermon, and who they're friends with. That's how much preaching I listen to, and I'm not bragging. I'm just, I'm just telling you, the more preaching you listen to, the the more you're going to know who that preacher listens to, what camp they're from, who they don't like, who they do like, what they believe on certain. T you can tell me a certain uh, preacher, and I can tell you what he believes on a certain thing because I've listened to him so much. Listening to preaching is a good way to redeem the time. It's a good way to multitask. All these people are wearing AirPods, but they are listening to junk. And when you're doing your daily tasks, like mowing and weed eating, pushing your kid on the swing, you should turn some preaching on. If I'm mowing, I have convictions against not listening to preaching or the audio Bible while I'm mowing. If I'm just mowing and I'm not listening to preaching... I start being under conviction about it. That's my own personal conviction. If I'm at work, I have convictions against not reading my Bible on break. I have conviction against not doing something spiritual while I'm working. That is how a lot of hours, you know, get wasted. While you're at work, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 hours. I mean, I've had to work 16 hours before. I've had to work 20 hours before. I know people that I work with right now that's worked 24 hours. I mean, that's a lot of hours that you're never going to get back. I can easily memorize scripture or something while I'm working. If you can't use AirPods, get those little index cards, write scriptures on it, memorize scriptures while you're working. You're redeeming the time. You're buying back all that time that you lost. You can make it be like that you, maybe you've, you're up in age, maybe you're 70 and you've only been saved five years and you think back, well, all those 65 years I wasted. Well, start heavily listening to preaching now. Start listening to the Bible heavily now and it's going to be like you listen to it all that time and you'll know more than somebody that's been saved 50 years. If you just do it consistently for a few years, you're going to know more than most Christians because most Christians, especially Baptists, are lazy. They don't want to learn the Bible. They have no interest in Bible preaching. And the preaching that they do listen to, it's all about the singing. It's all about the delivery. It's all about looking flashy. It's all about having a good sermon. And that's why people have been have become so shallow to the Bible.